truth. Bring it on. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Do you want the whole truth? I don't think you're ready. Governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. It's Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Welcome back. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Okay, go to the Facebook page. Tell me what you think about my focus, my obsession on the race conversation and what I see happening as it being brought up as a dodge, but that will become more pronounced closer we get to the election in 2014 because of the record of failure. Tell me what you think by going to American Family Radio, Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Okay? And you can also sign up for Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, nothingbuttruth.com. Check it out. Sign up. And become part of the jury. We go now to the senior legal analyst at the Heritage Foundation, our good friend Hans von Spakowski. And Hans, before we get to the defund debate and discussion, I wanted to ask you about what Eric Holder had to say regarding the sentencing in certain types of crime. And here is what he, part of what he laid out yesterday. Roll it. They. And let's be honest, some of the enforcement priorities that we have set have had a destabilizing effect on particularly, particular communities, largely poor and of color. And applied inappropriately, they are ultimately counterproductive. This is why I have today mandated a modification of the Justice Department's charging policy so that certain low-level, nonviolent drug offenders who have no ties to large-scale organizations, gangs, or cartels will no longer be charged with offenses that impose draconian mandatory minimum sentences. Hans, how should we look at this? Selective enforcement, changing the law without the legislative process? Or should we say, hey, he's taking a common sense approach? Well, the problem with Holder is that you know, it's hard to trust him. I, I mean, uh, overall, look, I, I think actually what he's proposing is is a good idea. Um, the, the problem is that, you know, are his prosecutors under Holder going to um, really apply this new policy evenly? You know, we haven't seen a lot of that in the way other, other cases have been handled. And if he really believes this is a problem, shouldn't he be going to Congress? and asking Congress to change the minimum sentencing um, guidelines that, that they have imposed. Well, that's the big question. And it really is a question not only in this, but in the DREAM Act under President Obama, the enforcement or lack thereof of certain laws, the selective enforcement of Obamacare as we know it, the Affordable Care Act, now, most recently, not going to be enforcing the caps for insurance companies to put on, in essence, because those costs are transferred in the front end to the people purchasing. Hey, we don't want to do that right now. We need people signing up. So, Hans, selective enforcement of the law, where does this lead, and what are the consequences for it? Who holds people to account when a president oversteps? Well, the only people that can really do that, uh, Congress can to a limited ex extent through, you know, investigations, oversight hearings. But uh, ultimately, uh, the only people that could really hold a president uh, to account are the American people, and they do that by voting and voting and so, people out of office. Okay. And in essence, if it's so complicated and we can have a debate, and somebody who has a one-sentence answer versus a three-sentence answer is going to win because they are able to communicate that one sentence, even if it's false and a false narrative or, what, or based on a false narrative, then we're, we're stuck with that. Well, that's true, but I, I think it's not a good idea, and I think a lot of politicians do that, to underestimate, actually, the intelligence of, the average American, particularly when it comes to making choices in, in the ballot box. 
Amen. Which leads us to the defunding effort in Congress of Obamacare in the coming debt ceiling debate. You have talked about the particulars when it comes to discretionary spending and mandatory spending and that some of the misunderstanding when it comes to the distinction between the two and the ability for Congress to do just that. Specifically, are you... Uh, in defunding Obamacare, can it be part of a bill? Does Congress have the authority to do it if it's mandatory spending? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the discretionary funding bill, and that's the continuing resolution under which the government is operating right now because, you know, they never passed a budget. Mm -hmm. That runs out September 30th. They're going to have to pass another one. And if they attached an amendment that defunded uh, the implementation of Obamacare, uh, written the way Ted Cruz and Mike Lee have done it, it would stop Obamacare from going into force. What happens in the back and forth? If you're advising the people who everybody in the Republican Party, <laughs> that's a unifying aspect of this, is they want to get rid of Obamacare, and it is a legislative priority to do so. Do you believe this is a smart strategy to go about it? in light of the fact that you've got a mainstream media who is pretty much the spokesperson or the the uh, campaign for President Obama when it comes to these policies. Yeah, I think they I think they could do it and I think the way to beat the media and frankly to beat the president on this issue is look, if they pass a continuing resolution that fully funds the government I mean, everything, even programs we don't like, uh, restoring the sequestration cuts, but with one exception, and that is the implementation of Obama, that then puts it on the president and his party to explain why they're willing to shut down the government, which is being fully funded just because there's no funding for a bill that the majority of the American people do not like. What about, uh, I believe Carl Rove has been talking about the fact that once it gets over to the Senate, it'll come back, they'll, they will fund it, and it will be the Republicans wanting to shut down government because, or defund Obamacare. No, I think they've just got to come out with one message, uh, mm -hmm. pushing back and saying it's the Democrats in the Senate and the president um, who are shutting down the government simply because they want this unpopular, unfair bill uh, imposed. And I think they can do that. And frankly, it's not just principally a, the, the right thing to do, but I, I actually think it'll help them politically, which is the complete opposite of what many Republicans seem to think. It's all about the shutdown in the history and the yes. fear associated with that, picking up two Senate seats, but dropping eight or nine House seats in the 96 election. Hans, shifting gears because of time, just we're looking at voter ID. It's back up in front of us. North Carolina, the state Department of Justice looks like it's getting back involved. Uh, tell me, what's the status of voter ID in America and, for that matter, North Carolina? Well, the governor signed a law into effect today uh, for voter ID. The legislature had passed, and I think uh, within an hour, a lawsuit had been filed uh, by the NAACP. And I was actually uh, laughing a little bit when I heard um, the uh, head of the NAACP claiming that this law was unconstitutional. You know, that's a bit difficult to say when the U.S. Supreme Court held that <laughs> voter ID laws, just like North Carolina's, are perfectly constitutional. And they did that back in 2008. Who's Counting? The name of the book you co-authored with John Fund. A handbook on how to get involved in the process, which you definitely encourage in the last two chapters. We appreciate you getting involved, Hans. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Ray. Take care. Green Durham's Nothing But Truth. We are going to go back in time, 1995. Bill Clinton, Pete Domenici. The shutdown, the truth about the shutdown. Green Durham's Nothing But Truth, probably on AFR Talk.